Hello everyone, this is the challenge question walkthrough for Edexcel's Pure Year 1 textbook chapter 11. So for our first question from exercise 11c, in the diagram below, the vector AB is equal to PI plus QJ and AD is equal to RI plus SJ. And we're told that ABCD is a parallelogram, prove the area of ABCD is PS minus QR. So to start us off, um, I've copied over the parallelogram here and drawn a box around it. And if we label the points here, so A, B, C and D, we can use the information they give us in the question, so these two vectors A, B and A, D, to find the um, lengths of the uh, rectangle. So if we start with the vector A, B, we know that this is equal to pi plus qj. So this horizontal length here is going to be equal to p. And this vertical length here is um, q. Now doing the same for ad. We know that this length here is going to be equal to r. And this length up here is rs. Now, because we know that this is a parallelogram, that means that the vector BC is equal to the vector AD. So this distance here is also equal to R, and this distance um, here is also equal to S. Now, if we rub off our labels for AD, we can see here that the red lengths P and R add up to give us the length of this side of the rectangle. And the blue lengths um, here add up to give the height of the rectangle. Therefore, we know that the area of the entire rectangle is equal to P plus R times S plus Q. So that's equal to PS plus PQ plus RS plus RQ. And we can subtract all the um, area that's not in the parallelogram. So these bits here and also here. By splitting up these areas into um, triangles and rectangles, as we have down there. So the area of this small rectangle here is QR. And so is the one up here. The um, area of the triangle down here is equal to P times Q over two, and the same for up here. And for the last two triangles, they have an area of S times R over two. So we know that the area of the parallelogram is equal to, well, PS plus PQ plus RS plus RQ from the area of the whole rectangle and we're going to take away two lots of QR and then take away one lot of SR and one lot of PQ for the triangles. So we have the SR and the RS cancelling, the PQ and the PQ cancelling. And so we're left with one lot of PS minus one lot of QR uh, as required. Okay, and our next question from exercise 11d. The point B lies in the line with equation 2y equals 12 minus 3x. Given that the magnitude of OB is equal to the square root of 13, find possible expressions for the vector OB in the form PI plus QJ. So if we have a look at the equation of the line they've given us, 2y equals 12 minus 3x. If we divide both sides by 2, we get y equals 6 minus 3 halves x. And if we have a look at what this looks like on a graph, then we have a y-intercept of 6 and the gradient is negative. So it looks something like this, where this point here is going to be 6. Okay, and we're asked for um, two points on the line B. So let's say, for example, here B1 and here B2, where the um, magnitude of the position vector of B so the length of this line here and that line there is equal to the square root of 13. 
Okay, right. So to find the values of P and Q, we know two things about the point B. We know that first of all, it um, is a point on the line uh, Y equals six minus three halves X. And secondly, we know that the distance from the origin is equal to the square root of 13. And we can use these two facts to set up a pair of simultaneous equations in P and Q. So if we know the, that the um, point must lie on this line, then we know that Q must equal 6 minus 3 halves P. So that's our first equation. And we can form our second equation from the magnitude given. So we know that P squared plus Q squared must equal 13. And that is our second equation. So if we plug our first equation into our second, we have P squared plus 6 minus 3 halves P or squared is equal to 13. And if we expand this all out, you get P squared plus 36 minus 2 lots of 6 times minus 3 halves. So that is minus 18 lots of P plus 9 quarters P squared is equal to 13. And if, now if we bring all our terms onto the left hand side of the equation, collect them all up and multiply through by 4, we end up with 13 P squared minus 72 P plus 92 is equal to 0. Now from this, you can use either your um, equation solver on your calculator, or you can factorise to get 13p minus 46 times p minus 2. So we know that p must be either 46 thirteenths or 2. And then if we plug back into our first equation to find the values of q, um, for p equals 46 thirteenths, we get q equals 6 minus 3 halves times 46 over 13, and that gives us 9 thirteenths. And for our second value of p, uh, q is equal to 6 minus 3 halves lots of um, 2, so that is 3. And so the two possible expressions for OB are first of all 2i plus 3j. And our second possible expression is going to be 46 thirteenths i plus 9 thirteenths j. Our third question is from exercise 11e and it says OPQR is a parallelogram, n is the midpoint of PQ and m is the midpoint of QR. The vector OP is equal to A and the vector OR is equal to B. The lines ON and OM intersect the diagonal PR at points X and Y respectively. And our first part asks us to explain why the vector PX is equal to minus J lots of A plus J lots of B, where J is a constant. So, if we have a look at um, the vector px, it's here, and we can see that it lies on the um, line pr. So, we can say for a start that the vector px is going to be equal to a multiple of um, pr. And we can work out what this vector pr is. Because you know that going from P to R is the same as going from P to O and then from O to R. So we've got that PR is equal to minus the vector A plus the vector B. And so we have that the vector PX is equal to minus J lots of the vector A plus J lots of the vector B as required. Now for part B. We're asked to show that the vector px is equal to k minus 1 lots of a plus a half k lots of b, where k is a constant. So here we need to think about another way of getting from um, p to x. So let's have a look at um, p, p to o and then o to x. Okay, so we have that the vector p to x is equal to p to o 
plus O to X. And we know that the vector P to O is minus 8. And now let's have a look at the vector O to X. Well, we know that it's going to be some multiple of the vector O to N. And we can work out what O to N is. We're going from first uh, O to P and then from P to N. And we know that the vector P to N is equal to half of the vector from P to Q because N is the midpoint of PQ. And uh, because this is a parallelogram, we have that P to Q is equal to O to R. So this is also B. So P to N is a half B. And so we have that O N is equal to um, A plus a half B. So O to X is equal to K lots of A plus a half K lots of B. And if we add that in here, if we collect our um, A terms, we have K minus one lots of A plus a half K B as required. Okay, and for part C, we're asked to explain why the values of J and K must satisfy these simultaneous equations. So K minus one is equal to minus J and the half K is equal to J. Well, because both of these expressions here uh, are equal, they're both the vector P to X, we must have that the coefficients of A and the coefficients of B are equal. So from the A vector coefficients, we must have that K minus one equals minus J. And from the uh, B vector coefficients, similarly, we must have that uh, a half K is equal to J. And for part D, they want us to actually solve these um, simultaneous equations. So if we multiply through the top one by minus one, we have uh, one minus K is equal to J. So setting these two equal to each other now, we have one minus K is equal to a half K. So K is equal to two thirds. And we know that a half K is equal to J. So J must be equal to one third. Okay and, the, okay, and the final part, E, asks us to deduce that the lines ON and OM divide the diagonal PR into three equal parts. So if we find what PX is equal to using our value of J, so J is a third, so PX is equal to minus the third A plus a third B. Therefore, the vector P to X is a third of the whole vector P to R. Now we can say because of the symmetry of a parallelogram, you can kind of imagine how this shape here and this shape here, they are going to be congruent because of the properties of a parallelogram. So we know that the vector PX here is going to be equal to the vector YR. So we know that the vector Px is equal to the vector Yr. Therefore, Yr also equals a third of the line Pr. And therefore, we know that Xy must also be a third of the line Pr. So the lines On and Om um, divide Pr into three equal parts, as required. Okay, and our final question for mix exercise 11, the point B lies in the line with equation 3y equals 15 minus 5x, given that the magnitude of OB is equal to the square root of 34 over 2, find two possible expressions for the vector OB in the form PI plus QJ. And um, this question may look very familiar to you, because we've um, already seen it before, from exercise 11d. So... We're going to go through the exact same process. So we have 3y equals 15 minus 5x. That's our first equation. And to find our second equation, we're just going to use the magnitude that they give us. So we have that x squared plus y squared is going to be equal to the square root of 34 
over 2 all squared, and that is just equal to 17 halves. Then we're going to solve these two simultaneously uh, using the exact same method as before. So if we divide through by 3 here, we get that y equals 5 minus 5 thirds x, and we can substitute that into equation 2. And if we do that and smooth everything out, then in the end we get 34 ninths x squared minus 50 thirds x plus 33 halves is equal to 0. And our solutions are x equals 3 halves and x equals 99 over 34. And if we substitute these back into the first equation to find the values of y, then we get that our first coordinate is 3 halves, 5 halves, and our second coordinate is uh, 99 over 34, 5 over 34. And that is the end of the challenge questions for chapter 11. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.